In this video, I'm going to explain the difference between color correction and color grading, and how you can use both to make your SLR footage look more cinematic. One of the most common questions I get is, how do I make my SLR footage look so cinematic? Most of the videos on my website were shot on a Canon 5D Mark II, which came out 8 years ago. The truth is, you don't need brand new equipment to shoot really high quality videos. And I know a ton of friends who have these really nice cameras, some brand new, and they've never used their video function at all. So if you're one of those people who have never played around with your video settings on your camera, or you have, and you're just trying to figure out how to get your SLR footage to look less digital, this is a great starting point. So the program I'm using to edit this footage is called DaVinci Resolve. And the cool thing is you can get it for free on Blackmagic's website. So go to Blackmagic Design and just go down and download the free version for Windows or Mac. And even though I'm using DaVinci Resolve for this tutorial, you can use Premiere, After Effects, Color, Magic Bullet, basically any program that has these three color correcting wheels on them, because that's the main tool that we're going to use. So looking at the image that we're going to use, you'll notice that the footage is really flat. There's no contrast or saturation, and that's exactly what we want. Step one in making your SLR footage look cinematic actually happens before you start shooting. You want to use your camera's neutral setting, or if you have time, I suggest downloading Technicolor's free cinema log profile called CineStyle. This is basically just a flat picture style that you can download to your computer to your CF card, and you can get it for free online too. If you shoot Nikon, there's another brand called Vision Color, and they offer a similar picture style called Vision Log Raw, and that's also for free on visioncolor.com. And so that's really step one, making sure that you're shooting in a really neutral, flat color profile, either through the cine style picture setting that you downloaded, or with your camera's neutral setting. The reason for that is you want the most dynamic range in your image before you start to do any color in post-processing. You want a really clean, flat image where you don't blow out your highlights or crush your dark so you can go in manually and set your black and white points in afterwards. So with my flat image now in DaVinci, I'm going to start color correcting. And all color correcting means is adding back in contrast, setting your black and white points, and making sure that your white balance is correct. Basically making sure that white is actually white in your video. When I shot this, I made sure that my white balance was set to daylight, so it should be pretty spot on, and I can check that by looking at my parade here, and seeing that the red, green, and blue channels are all even at its highest point, or close to it. But let's say I forgot to check white balance before I started shooting, and when I brought it in to DaVinci, it looked like this. Looking at my parade, I can see that the blue is way higher than the green and the red. So the first step is to use these three color wheels here, the lift, gamma, and gain, which essentially are your shadows, midtones, and your highlights. And how these color wheels work is whichever way you push this middle circle, you'll see that it pulls that color into that value range. So again, lift is my shadows, gamma is my midtones, and gain is my highlights. So right now, whichever color I push towards in the gain, it's only adding that color in to the highlights. I want to even out these peaking points on my red, green, and blue. So I'm going to go to my gains because white point is controlled in your highlights. And I'm going to move this inner circle back until these values in the red, green, and blues start to even out again. And so once they're about even, you can see that the whites are truly white. It looks a little more natural and true to what you would see in real life. Now that my image is white balanced, I'm going to go ahead and add contrast back into this flat image that I have. And I'm going to do that by setting my black and white points. So looking at the parade, I can see that nothing is touching this bottom line. That is my true black point. And now we're going to use our lift wheel, which controls our shadows. And I'm going to go down to this wheel at the bottom here. And I'm going to bring it down, and you'll look at the parade, and you'll see that my red, green, and blue channels are now going down towards that black point line. Alright, so now that I've dropped my values down towards zero, I'm happy with this black point, now I'm going to set my white point. So back over to my highlights wheel, or the gain wheel, and I'm going to do the same thing here, and bring my values up to the top line. So right off the bat you'll notice that once we set our black and white points on this parade, the image is looking a little better. There's more contrast, a little more saturation, but I want to add a little bit more contrast. So going down here, 
I'm going to add contrast back into the footage. So that's a good starting point. And now I'm going to go over to my pivot and kind of move the contrast point here. And again, favoring the face. All right, now that I set my white and black points and added back in the contrast, I'm going to go in and play with my gamma wheel. So this is where the midtones are and essentially where the skin tone lives in video footage. So I'm going to bring this up until her face is nice and exposed. And then I'm going to go back to my lift wheel and kind of correct and push and pull a little bit more. And I think that's about good. Okay, so I'm happy with how this looks, and that was a very basic quick color correction. Now we can go on to color grading. So I'm going to open up a new node, which is essentially just a new layer that I can edit on. And now I'm going to show you how to do a really popular color grade you've probably seen in some movies. Um, Transformers uses it, Dope uses it, a lot of Hollywood blockbusters use it. And it's where the video has a lot of blues in the shadows and oranges in the highlights. So how we're going to do that is again by using the color wheels. I'm going to start with the shadows. So over on the lift wheel, I'm going to go down and push the center wheel towards the blue end until I start to get a bluish green value in my shadows. And as I pull color into the shadow, it also affects my luminance and might brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to go and drop the value on this wheel as I kind of push and pull throughout this process. All right, so that's a good starting point for the shadows now, and I'm gonna go over to my gamma, where the skin tones live, and I'm gonna push orange into them. And so from here, it really is just pushing and pulling between the three wheels. So here's a basic grade here. There's blue in the shadows and orange values in the midtones. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more contrast. It's gonna automatically add more saturation to the footage. So I'm gonna go over to my saturation and lower that a little bit. And that's pretty much it, just using your three-way color wheels to push in color to your shadows, midtones, and highlights, playing around with your contrast and your saturation to get you some really great results from your SLR footage. And I'm going to go through the process really quickly again with some iPhone footage, just to show you what this would look like on some iPhone footage and to show you that you don't need to buy brand new equipment or a brand new 4K camera to get cinematic-like video. So again, just raising my highlights drop in my black point, throwing in some contrast, and then a quick color grade. Red in the shadows and some teal in the highlights. I'm gonna increase my midtones. And it's that simple. Even with iPhone footage, you can get some pretty cool stuff. So just to recap the process, step one is to shoot in a flat color profile. Then you're going to do a basic color correction, adding back in the contrast to your footage. And then step three is to add a creative color grade. You can check out my other videos on my website that I've used this exact same process for. And if you're interested in more behind the scenes and how to's, I share a lot of information on my blog, everything from gear to camera settings and post processing. And if you have any questions for me, hit up my contact page and shoot me an email. I'm really easy to get a hold of. Questions about cameras, editing, directing, anything. So thanks for watching, and here's some more cat footage. Your name, down your skin, feel